Okay, so I am happy to inform you all that again we will have two writers as our resource persons. Our first presenter is Ms. Cyril Marama. Cyril is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Physics for Teachers from the Philippine Mall University in Manila. The BSPT course is a special program for DOSD scholars. Cyril joined NISMED in 1996 and now holds the position of Science Education Specialist 2 at the Physics Education Group. She finished her Master of Arts in Education, major in Physics Education at the Aichi University of Education in Japan. Cyril is currently pursuing a PhD in Education program, major in Physics at the College of Education here in UP Diliman. In today's webinar, Cyril will walk us through Module 3, Heat and Temperature. Cyril? Yes, uh, Ma'am Celia. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, good. Welcome. Good afternoon. Okay, um, can you hear me loud and clear? Okay, thank you, thank you. So welcome to the second part of our webinar on grade 8 first quarter topics, okay, under force, motion, and energy. So um, this afternoon, my presentation will be about module 3 of chapter 1, entitled Heat and Temperature. So uh, please take note that this comes after module 2 entitled Work, Power, and Energy. Some of the concepts developed in Module 2 will be revisited in this module, particularly the idea that all moving bodies have or possess kinetic energy. So when we say moving bodies, this does not only refer to the things around us that we see. So at the particle level, these moving bodies can be taken as the particles that make up a material and that idea is what we are going to use later. So at this point, students will also learn, if they have not encountered it yet, that everything around us are made up of particles. This will again be covered in quarter three. Please take note. This will again be covered in quarter three when they discuss about the particle nature of matter. So. Since in science, we promote spiral progression. So allow me to present to you first the transition of learning from the lower grade, I mean from grade 3 up to grade 9. So here's the transition from grade 3 to grade 6. Take note that there is no separate topic for heat in grade 6. But this does not mean that they will not discuss about it anymore. It will still be covered when they discuss about transformation of energy from one form to another, which is the main topic in grade 6. Because in grade 6, one of the important ideas is that energy exists in different forms and can be transformed from one form to another. Example, um, let's say, for the uh, heating uh, appliances, for example, um, transformation of electric energy from electrical energy to heat or can be transformation of energy from chemical energy to heat okay and here is the transition from grade 7 to grade 9 as you notice students will again encounter the same topics covered in the lower grades so where do you think will progression come into picture in the lower grades it will be more an observation and students will just describe what they observe. But they are not expected to explain at the microscopic level how heat transfers between bodies or how heat affects matter. Hindi pa, kumbaga, hindi pa aabot sa ganung lalim, in other words. And where are they supposed to achieve this? In grade 7 and 8. After they discuss about the effects of heat on matter in grade 8, when they reach grade 9, students should learn that heat transfer can do work. And to contextualize this, they are going to talk about the processes involved in the generation of electricity in power plants. Now, going back to grade 7, okay, these are what students should have learned from the module on heat transfer. 
Um, one important thing here that should be made clear to them is that heat is a form of energy that exists only during the time that the energy is being transferred. This energy is what we call the thermal energy. So once it is transferred, it ceases or stops to become heat. It is again called thermal energy. And this will add up to the energy or to the thermal energy of the body that absorbs it. Okay? Or it may be transformed to other forms of energy. And there are different ways of transferring energy as well. And lastly, the last bullet, okay, not all objects transmit or absorb heat in the same way or at the same rate. Okay? So to continue. For grade 8, what are they supposed to accomplish or learn after going through this module? Well, students should be able to describe the effects of heat on matter, explain these effects at the particle level, so medyo may lalim na. They are now considering the microscopic level. They should determine whether heat affects all kinds of materials in the same way. And lastly, they should be able to distinguish heat from temperature, meaning they should be able to determine whether heat and temperature are one and the same. And if they are different, they should be able to distinguish one from another. Okay? So basically, the aim of this module is to seek answers to these questions. Okay. Module 3 focuses on two things. Okay? Effects of heat transfer on materials. And the other one is the factors that affect the amount of heat being transferred, or meaning the factors that affect the process of heat transfer. So to achieve this, the following objectives are included in the module, or activities rather. For the effects, there are three activities. Four actually, but for the other one in the module, students are not asked to perform it anymore. This can be considered as a demonstration activity well, depending on the availability of the materials. Later, I will describe in details all of this, okay? For the factors, here there are two factors considered. First, the amount of material or the mass of the material and the kind of material which is differentiated in terms of their heat capacities. So, okay, what these students we have here activity one entitled explaining hotness or coldness, okay? So what these students will do here is that they will initially have filled the containers with cold water. So as you can see on this screen, there are three containers. And they are initially have filled with, uh, cold, wat with cold water, the same cold water. Then they will measure the initial temperature of the water. Then they will again fill the containers to the brim with water of different temperature. One with hot water, let's take that as uh, container A. Another with tap water, container B. And the last one with the same cold water. Then they will again measure the temperature of the water inside the three containers. So what will students be able to learn from this activity? Take note that this activity deals with one of the effects of heat transfer, and that is change in temperature. But the result of this activity can also be used to generate the idea that the amount of change in temperature will also give us an idea on how much energy is absorbed or released by the object. So in this particular activity, in which container do you think is there a greater amount of heat transferred? Well, I may give you time to think about it. Okay. So if your answer is in the container that was added, added with hot water, you're right. Okay? In this container, students will be able to determine a greater change in temperature. Greater change in temperature means greater amount of energy transferred. By the way, in the module, the word heat is written in italic form. I mean in the learner's module or in the learner's material, the word heat is written in italic form. Why? Because uh, the amount of transferred energy due to heat is actually the amount of thermal energy transferred. So since the amount of heat transferred relates to the amount of thermal energy, the word heat in italic form is used. How about in the third container? Let me ask you again. 
How about in the third container that was added with the same cold water? Will there be a change in temperature? Well, maybe since it is not an isolated case, there will be a possibility here that students will get a temperature difference in the third setup because heat transfer may take place between the cold water and its surrounding, which is relatively of higher temperature. So before you end your discussion on activity one, you can pose this question. Okay? What then makes the temperature of water change? So, okay, nandiyan na. Heat transfer took place. But why is there a corresponding change in the temperature of water? Well, don't expect your students to answer this. But they can do this once they are done doing the next activity. Activity 2 is entitled, Die in Water. So, in this activity, okay, we have again another three setups containing water, this time of different temperature. So students will pour equal amount of liquid dye into the three containers, okay, with water of the same, uh, of the same amount, but of different temperature. Then they will observe and compare the rate of scattering of dye throughout the water. So yung bilis ng pagkalat, no? Scattering of the dye throughout the water. Again, what will students learn from this particular activity? They should be able to observe that the dye will scatter fastest throughout the water uh, with, uh, of highest temperature, I mean the hot water. So what does this mean? Where or which particles of the dye do you think will gain more energy from the water? The one added to the hot water, tap water, or cold water? If you say to the one that was added with, I added to the hot water, then again, you're correct. Of course, the one added to the hot water. And it is in this container where students will observe a higher rate of scattering of the dye. Remember that in module 2, kinetic energy, okay, refers to the body, uh, the energy possessed by moving bodies. And it can be determined by the speed of the moving body. So how do we now compare kinetic energies of the particles of the water as well as the dye inside the three containers? Where is the kinetic energy of the particles greater? Of course, in the hot water. So you can ask the students to describe, based on your post-active discussion, the relationship between the temperature of the material or substance and the kinetic energy of the particles. Again, let me emphasize, temperature indicates a measure of the kinetic energy of the particles. But as you go further in your discussion, you will be able to come up with a more accurate description of temperature and energy of the particles. You can give examples for this. Okay? Now, for the second effect, as what I have said a while ago, this is, uh, this is not required for the students to perform, but this is a suggested activity for demonstration purposes. This activity demonstrates expansion of solid when heated. But it must be emphasized that expansion does not only take place among solids, but also in liquids and gases. Another example given in the module is the expansion of liquid inside the tube of the thermometer. This uh, can be mercury or nowadays alcohol. Thermal expansion generally okay, ex can be explained by the changes again in the kinetic energy of the particles of the material. So when the particles move faster, the tendency is that they move farther apart from each other and occupy greater space. Okay, now let's move on to the next activity, activity three. In this activity, students are asked to measure the temperature of ice at regular time intervals while melting. And after it has melted, then if there is still time, they may continue to heat it up until it boils. And they will again continuously measure as well its temperature at regular time intervals. Then 
they are supposed to plot the graph of temperature versus time. So if you are going to look at your screen, there is uh, the, the right side shows ide this ideal actually, but they, their graph may look something like this, okay? So what's again the most important idea that students must acquire from this activity? In this activity, they must realize that heat transfer that does not always result to a change in temperature. So in this case, there are intervals of time wherein the temperature of water does not change. So what happens to the heat that was added to the water? The amount of heat transferred is actually used to break the attraction between the particles so they can eventually move faster and further. When the phase change ends, I mean, when the ice has totally melted, then that is the time that the temperature will again change. So by this time, they should have already described the three major effects of heat on matter. What are they? Temperature change, change in size or volume, and phase change. They should have also learned that temperature does not vary with amount. Like in the case of cold water added with the same amount of added with the same cold water, ideally in an isolated case, uh, there should be no change in the temperature of the water. So this will give them the idea that temperature does not measure the total kinetic energy of the particles, but rather their average kinetic energy. Okay. Now let's move on to the next slide. Okay. This time, for Activity 4 and Activity 5 later, um, these activities will demonstrate two of the factors that affect the amount of heat that a material can transfer or absorb. One is the amount of material or simply its mass, and this is for Activity 4. Okay? Activity 4 is an example of an unstructured activity because there is no specific procedure that students can follow. They are just given a problem to solve, and uh, as you can see, there are some guide questions to consider as they try to seek answer to the problem and, and to come up with a relationship between the two variables. What the, are these variables? The mass and the amount of heat, which is indicated by the amount of change in temperature. There can be lots of skills that students can demonstrate through this activity. So if you intend to assess their, these skills in doing scientific investigation, uh, for me, having rubrics will be a great help. Okay? Next. This is the last activity in the module. Okay? Comparing heat capacities. The aim of this activity is to enable the students, students rather, to recognize that different materials have different capacities to absorb or transfer heat. So in this activity, the suggested liquid samples are water and oil. But you can add other liquids just to show that different liquids or materials in general have different specific heat capacities. Pwede pa kayong gumamit ng iba pang li o anong available sa inyong place. So how will they be able to arrive at this idea? Um, since the students will expose the liquid samples to the same condition, I mean, uh, they heat them up using the same amount of hot water from the same source, then they must realize that the liquid that requires the longest time to increase in temperature by, let's say, 5 degrees Celsius absorbs the greatest amount of heat. Siyempre, kung alin yung mas matagal na na-exposed, so, yung mas maraming na-absorb, okay, na energy. Now, in relation to, the, to their heat capacities, which is defined as the amount of heat needed by a certain amount of the material to change its temperature by 1 degree Celsius, so yun po yung heat capacity, the liquid that takes the longest time to increase in temperature is considered the one with the highest heat capacity, okay? So, by the way, um, to ensure that all the liquid samples will have the same initial temperature, I suggest that you store them all prior to the activity. Um, you store them all together in the same room. Kung pwede, the same room where the students will perform the activity. And uh, store them, say, overnight. 
such that so that when they perform students perform the activity the liquid samples will be of the same temperature now uh, I think this is the second to the last slide that I'm going to show you. Okay, Regarding the difference between heat and temperature, there is actually no specific activity in this module that would provide all of them. But as the students try to describe, analyze, and explain or interpret the results of the activities, um, they should have realized some of this. And these are included here in the list. So take note that in the list, uh, the last bullet, temperature can be easily measured by the aid of the thermometer. Heat cannot be measured directly, but we can determine it by using the quantities that are related to heat, which students have already discussed in the previous activities. These are heat capacities of the material and the amount of change in the temperature of the material. Greater heat capacities, greater amount of heat transferred. Greater amount of change in the temperature of the material, greater amount of heat transferred. Okay? And, okay, generally, these are what the students should have learned after going through this module. First one, the changes. That's, I mean, change in temperature, change in length or volume, phase change that matter undergoes due to heat transfer can be attributed to the changes in the kinetic energy of the particles that make up the matter. And lastly, heat transfer may not always cause a change in the temperature of the material. So, I think, okay, so that ends my presentation, Mamsel. I hope our listeners, our teachers, wow. uh, have gained something from this. Thank you, everyone, very much. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, heat and temperature. Now, folks, can we now tell the difference? Ano yung heat? Ano yung temperature? Ang natandaan ko talaga dun sa last uh, previous to this slide, uh, the temperature can be measured using a thermometer. So that's one thing I'll remember, I think, forever. Uh, maraming salamat ulit, uh, Cheryl. I see some of our uh, friends from Arellano High School are having some connectivity issues. I see them logging in and out. No, napuputol-putol yata yung kanilang connection. Hopefully, uh, maayos yan. Ano? Uh, friends from Don Bosco are saying, uh, naririnig naman nila audible pa, although may mga vibrations na uh, natatransmit sa kanila. Okay, so we're experiencing physics, no? Uh, here in the webinar, vibrations, audio, sounds, and more of that uh, in the next uh, presentation. So again, thank you very much, uh, Cyril. Now let's welcome our next uh, resource person. All right, uh, our next presentation will be on uh, module 5, but uh, as uh, our resource person is preparing for her share of the sharing, uh, may I plug this shamelessly. Uh, uh, we will have uh, a national conference in October. Uh, that's uh, the third week of October. If you pay the registration fee by August 15, you'll get a 500 peso discount. So 5,500 na lang po yun instead na 6,000. And you can download the registration form from the conference website that you can see on your screen. The, the link is live, so you can click on that. You can also download the DepEd advisory or the CHED memo, whichever is uh, uh, helpful in your case. And you can still uh, submit abstracts for presentations until the 31st of August. And if you're coming from out of town, book a room now at the UP Med Hostel. Some of you also request for specific letters of invitation addressed to them or to their schools. If you want that, uh, simply email uh, to our conference email account, uh, also flashed on your screens. All right, so uh, let us now welcome our next resource person, Dr. Marie, Marie Paz Morales. 
Dr. Morales is an Associate Professor of the Faculty of Science, Technology, and Mathematics at the College of Teacher Development of the, of the Philippine Normal University. She specializes in physics and science education, teaching both pre-service and in-service physics teachers. She also engages in science education and interdisciplinary researches focused on the culture and language perspective of learning the sciences. Uh, Dr. Morales just completed her Doctor of Philosophy degree in science education major in physics at the De La Salle University, Manila, where she was recognized as having written the most outstanding dissertation. Oh, palakpak naman dyan. Uh, make sure you use the, the icon on your status uh, uh, menu. She obtained her master's degree in physics teaching at the same institution while her bachelor's degree in physics teaching was completed at the Philippine Normal University, also in Manila. Her enthusiasm in writing is also extended to books, manuals, modules, and research publications. In today's webinar, Dr. Morales will discuss modules 5, Sounds, and Module 6, The Colors of Light. Get ready, folks. Pay attention because she gives this. Everyone, let's all welcome Dr. Maripaz Morales. Dr. Morales? Okay, thank you, Ma'am Celia. Um, good afternoon, po. Thank you very much for the applause. I hope that uh, you will still give me the applause after the presentation. <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, welcome to webinar session on quarter one. So we'll be working on module five, sound. Um, most of the slides uh, I am going to present are um, sort of identified slides, which you can also see in the learner's manual or the teacher's guide. So some of the slides were already presented by Mam Serial a while ago. So let me just move on with uh, the different slides, which I think are necessary for our presentation. So as you can see in the first slide, uh, we have the flow of the session or the presentation. We have some preliminaries, the questions of the module, and the session proper. Uh, these are uh, mentioned by Mam Serial a while ago, together with the Transition from grades 3, 4, to 5, and then last to 6. So as you can see, from grades 3 to 6, we're talking about energy. In grades 7 to 10, uh, here we have the focus sound. So we have grade 7, production characteristics, uh, grade 8 to 9, and then to 10, propagation through various media, speed, and properties like reflection and refraction. And then uh, after that, we have the grade 11. So let's take a look at the transition from 7 to 8. As you can see, students should recognize or have recognized that there are different forms of energy and that they travel in different ways. Like sound and light, they travel uh, as waves. Um, after that, on grade 8 or in grade 8, uh, what we would want our students to know is uh, what might be the probable effects of this heat. Like for example, on speed of sound. So, in 7, ang gusto nating mangyari, makita nila, o ang nangyari noon, makita nila papaano yung pag-travel ng energy. Uh, Nag-travel na yung energy, so pagdating sa 8, titingnan natin anong mangyayari doon sa kung saan napunta yung energy. Okay, so moving on, these are the standards which are also written in your curriculum guide. Particularly, these are the learning competencies which are also the objectives of the module. To so compare the speed of sound in the different media infer the movement of particles of an object uh, that affects the speed of sound through it and investigate the effect of temperature to the speed of sound through fair testing. So, Mam Serial a while ago mentioned about going deeper, taking a look at the particles, not only the observables. Uh, these are the different questions that we have for the module. So, there are basically three. You can use them as your guide whether the students has already or the students have already assimilated the concepts we wanted them to assimilate. Okay? So before going on, 
uh, since, of course, K-12 is learner-centered, we need to check their prior knowledge, the student's prior knowledge. And so there are some sample questions in the module which can serve as your pretest. So let's take a look at one of those questions. Mamsel, can we have poll number one, please? Coming right up. Yes, yeah. coming right up. Ma'am. There you have it. Okay, so... Uh, guys, probably you can take a look at uh, the question. What might be the probable answer to this? So we can see uh, your prior knowledge also. <laughs> Ayan. So marami akong nakikita. <laughs> Iba-ibang sagot. Okay. So most of you, thank you, Mamsel. Most of you answered vibrations. Uh, at least I know uh, that there are some of you who answered frequency. So this sample question and the rest of the questions which will be presented to you can serve as your pretest. So they can guide you to determine the different misconceptions. Uh, here are the samples. I also place the respective answers. Okay, there are 10 of them. So we can just go through them. There. So from here, we can identify some misconceptions of the students. Particularly, let's say number nine, that could lead to a particular misconception. Um, which one? It's all about the temperature, okay? So there, you can have the misconceptions and we can address the misconceptions using the different activities presented here. So let's take a look at the different activities. Um, in grade 7, they had several activities from my sounding box to big time gig. Specifically, these were the activities presented to them. Right now, we are trying to take a look at six activities. So there are a lot of six activities. Okay. Uh, so the first activity is all about um, sound consisting of vibrations that travel through air and sound transmitted in air through vibrations of air molecules. So here you can see the different materials. There, there are a lot of materials, but they are easily available. And there are two parts of the procedure. Part A uh, is all about the vibration produced by sound, and part B is transmitting sound. So we would want our students to infer that sound is kinetic energy of vibrations that travel through air, and sound is transmitted in air through vibrations of air molecules. Uh, you can see this is the setup. Yeah, and you can take the ear photo here on this part of the physics book. There. Um, I also presented here different guide questions. The guide questions can serve as your uh, questions during the post-activity discussion. So the guide questions were developed in such a way that they are developmental in, in nature. You can probably adopt the teach by uh, questioning uh, approach. So you can make use of the different questions there. So I also included the different answers to these questions, which are also found in your teacher's guide. Okay, so for activity one, there are a lot of questions included to be able to come up with the idea that sound uh, is vibration and that they travel through vibrations of air particles. So for activity number two, before going on, probably we can ask Mamsel again for poll number two. Mamsel? Okay, so there. Um, is sound longitudinal or transverse? Probably you can make use of these poll questions also as your um, introductory question to students to determine their prior knowledge. So thank you, Mamsel. Okay, so moving on, uh, activity number two. You would want our students to distinguish the different characteristics of waves, frequency wavelength, and compute wave speed. All of these characteristics were already taken in grade 7, so at least they are familiar with them. Okay? These are the different materials. 
And uh, the most probable thing that they can do is to set up the material in such a way that they can produce a longitudinal and a transverse wave to be able to complete uh, this table. So as you can see, T1, T2, T3 here represent the different trials for each of the different kinds of waves. And again, uh, guide questions for your post-discussion. And for activity three, in activity three, okay, there are uh, these are the different materials. We would want them to distinguish which material would sound transmit, which material transmits sound best rather. Okay, so students will be able to distinguish which material transmits sound best. So these are the different materials, and this is the table corresponding the activity. Again, guide questions are provided for your post-activity discussion. Okay? Of course, from this activity, what we can do is, or what we are after is, um, sound travel fastest where? Is it in solid, liquid, or gas? Okay, so some precautions here. Um, most probably, you can be very successful with the activity if you do it in a closed room, uh, a quiet room, for that matter, there. And for activity four, there, where the sound travel fastest, it must be in solid. Okay, thank you, Mamsel. For activity four, uh, precaution then, precaution also is that it should be done in a very quiet room. Okay? Uh, we are to, const we, are, we are to ask our students to construct chimes. So this is an example of a chime, as you can see in the projected screen or projected slide. Okay? Um, we can have two to three kinds of chimes. One would be, uh, the suspended materials are very far from one another. Uh, the second one would be they are very closely spaced. So at least we can compare uh, how sound is transmitted in very closely spaced um, materials and very far apart materials okay, for the chimes. Then this will be the corresponding table that they are supposed to, to complete. And these are the guide questions for your post-activity discussion once again. Okay? So before activity number five, there. Mam Sel, the last poll, please. Okay, where does sound travel yeah, fastest? Coming right up. Thank you, ma'am. So masabit yung I think everybody answered. Keyboard. <laughs> hot medium. Ayan, maraming sumagot ng hot. Opo, pito sa kumpara sa wala. Ayan. So, thank you, ma'am. This will be our setup. There are three uh, graduated cylinders. Uh, one precaution is that this must be done in a quiet room once again. You should ask your students to focus on the pitch rather than the loudness. And as you can see, the air column must be constant in all the three cylinders. Okay? Uh, one of the cylinders will be uh, filled with tap water. Then test whether the level of water is already giving us a uh, loud sound when we place the tuning fork on top of it. If it's already the case, then we can have the same level for the hot and for the cold. For the hot, uh, as much as possible, we have a 70 degrees Celsius temperature hot water. And for the cold, about 20 to 25 degrees. Or much better if it's uh, lower than the 20 degree. Okay? This will be their uh, corresponding table. So there are three cylinders. You can ask them to determine the temperature. Mom Cyril a while ago just taught them how to determine the temperature. And then you can ask them to identify the pitch that they were able to hear. So they can place it here in the room, the cold, and the hot cylinder. After which,
you can make use of these questions to be able to achieve our objective that they are to assimilate uh, the science concept that temperature is uh, depend the sound the speed of sound is dependent rather on temperature okay so what relationship exists between frequency and pitch uh, directly depend direct dependence of frequency and pitch okay there and we can also make use of what they have already learned in grade 7 to be able to complete the picture which is like this. The higher the temperature, the greater the pitch, the greater the frequency, the faster the sound. And so the higher the temperature, the faster the sound. From which we can um, introduce the concept of speed in terms of an equation. So we can ask them to substitute the temperature here at P Okay, and they are able to come up with the speed at a specific temperature. We can revise uh, the table to show the speed, computed speed, uh, on the last column. From the computed speed, this will serve as their theoretical uh, output. The pitch of the sound will be their uh, experimental output, and so you can ask them to compare later on. Okay, you can also give them some sample problems, uh, just like this one and some practice problems. The answers to this are found in the teacher's guide. Okay, And finally, activity number six is all about uh, how to observe or observing longitudinal waves uh, as they reflect and refract. So we make use of these materials. And students here will be able to observe how longitudinal waves reflect and refract. And uh, after which, they are to complete to a specific table, so the one for reflection and the other one for refraction. Uh, these are again the guide questions for your post discussion. There. Okay, so these are the different science concepts that we were able to have, supposedly, in grade 7. Sound is produced by vibrations, amplitude, more amplitude, more energy, louder sound, frequency and pitch are directly related, thicker strings, longer strings produce low pitch, and they applied all this in designing of indigenous musical instruments. For grade 8, these are the different uh, focus concepts. Sounds are vibrations, and they are transmitted through vibrations of air molecules. They are longitudinal waves. They also exhibit the same properties and characteristics as transverse waves. They travel fastest in solids, at least and least in gases, and uh, they are best transmitted in closely spaced matter. They travel fastest in hotter medium. Um, the sample questions in the teacher's guide can also be uh, used as your post test. So I have already itemized or categorized the questions in terms of the key questions. So if your students were able to answer numbers 2, 3, 7, and 8, uh, probably we can say that these students will be able to answer key question number 1. Or 5, 6, and 7, they can easily answer question number 2. And 1 and 9, they can easily answer key question number 3. Okay. With that, we can say our students have learned or have not learned. Uh, that, uh, in that case, uh, this is the presentation for sound. Uh, thank you for listening. OK, that was tough. <laughs> All right, so we have one question here from our participant. We will later on uh, post that uh, to Dr. Morales during the Q&A. Again, maraming salamat, Dr. Morales. Uh, let us move quickly now in Thank the interest you, of time. Let us move quickly to the last presentation. And just a quick announcement for everyone. There are now mathematics resources in Kasama Teachers. There are curriculum guides for grades 1 to 2 and 7 to 8. You see the links there. Uh, just visit Kasama Teachers and locate these materials. All right, so let's move on to the Module 6 presentation on light. Dr. Morales? Oh. Yes, Ma'am Sel, thank you once again. So again, good afternoon. Uh, this is me once again, Paz. We'll work on Module 6 uh, entitled Light. The first few slides are just the same as that of uh, Module 5. So probably we can skip those and move uh, right away to the key questions. 
Eso. This are the grade seven, uh, three to six uh, focus. Um, ayaw na pong lumabas ng iba. <laughs> Ayon. Okay. There. So, let's take a look at the transition specific to light. Uh, in grade 7, they were able to discuss color intensity to frequency and wavelength. That they were able to design and implement experiment that shows that light travels in a straight line. And that they were able to investigate the relationship between light intensity and the distance from a light source. In grade 8, uh, we would want them to demonstrate the existence of color components of visible light using prism or diffraction grating. Uh, explain the hierarchy of colors in relation to energy and explain why red is bent the least and violet is bent the most according to their wavelengths or frequencies. So moving on, these are the standards and the competencies which are also the objectives of the module. Uh, demonstrate the existence of color components of visible light using a prism or a diffraction grating. Explains the hierarchy key of colors in relation to energy explains that red is bent uh, the least and violet the most according to their wavelengths or frequencies. And so, of course, this is the same as all the other modules. We have the different key questions okay, to serve as our guide if our students were able to uh, assimilate all the science concepts we wanted them to, to learn. So, um, for the pretest, the pretests are, these are the sample questions provided in the teacher's guide. Again, I categorize them already according to the key questions. Okay, so before moving on, probably we can have uh, poll number one, Mamsel. Yep, coming right up. I think Thank this is the one. Um, I think so. <laughs> okay, yes, ma'am. We see colors of light because of which property of wave? <laughs> okay. Nakakalubang sa ngayon ang refraction. Okay, thank you, ma'am, Cell. So, in grade 7, uh, they were able to conduct these different activities. In grade 8, there are basically five activities. And we would want them to be familiar with these five activities. And so, moving on, let's take a look at the different activities. Okay. Okay. So before we go on, we have to make them familiar or we have to give them some idea what the, what's the difference between a physical density and an optical density. So I provided here um, the description of the physical density and the optical density. Okay. So for activity number one, here are some of the reminders. So we would want them to... Uh, infer that white light of the different color lights and that color lights bend differently when they strike objects like prism. So probably most of you do have prisms uh, in, in your schools, respective schools. Um, for this particular activity, there are two sets of procedures. Uh, well, it depends on the availability of materials. If you have prism, you can just make use of part B. If you don't have prism, you can just make use of part A. But if you have prism and you want to make use of part A also, that's fine. Okay, so this is the setup for part A. So some reminders, make sure please that your students are trying to observe uh, the light reflected or the light that strikes the water, uh, strikes the mirror, and is reflected by the mirror on the white screen. Okay? There. So we can make the, make use of this table to be able to connect um, the refractive index and the uh, arrangement of the color as they see in the outputs that they have in the two parts of the activity. 
These are the different questions once again that will serve as your guide questions for the post discussion. Okay? There. So as you can see, there are mentions already of dispersion and refractive indices. Okay. Comparing the different color lights and the refractive indices. Okay, here, in this particular question, you can see uh, how refractive index indicate uh, how light also bends. There, the greater the refractive index, uh, they appear at the bottom, just like the red. Okay. So going further, there are four more activities. So before we go on, Mamsel, let's have poll number two. Okay, you can ask your students these questions. Which color is most bent? Is it the red or the violet? Yan kayo, ano po ang inyong sagot? Ayan, maraming nagsabing red. Thank you, Ma'am Cell. So moving on, that will be for activity number two entitled Red versus Violet. So we would want our students to be able to observe that bending depends on the refractive index of the color light. So these are the different materials. This is the setup. Okay, you can use two prism. Of course, uh, one requirement is that this should be done in a dark room. Uh, pag well, hindi ho dark, ito po yung output sa left. Kapag dark, kitang kita po yung mga color lights. There. And so, uh, intense pen light is also needed for this activity. Uh, these are the different questions. Okay, did you observe refract? Did you observe refracted red and violet light? Okay. So, on which color light did you observe more bending? The answer is supposedly violet. Okay. There. So, moving on, we have quest activity number three, rather. Okay. Which has the most energy? Okay. Red or violet? Okay, so most of you answered violet. Okay, thank you, Mamsel. Okay, so the students here should be able to infer that energy of the color light increases as one goes towards the right side of the color spectrum. And so the re red has the least energy and the blue has the most energy. Okay, so this will be their, uh, the corresponding uh, table that they are supposed to fill in. Okay, and then these are the questions for your post discussion. Okay, and for the fourth one, um, here uh, the title is the color spectrum revisited. It's because they were able to, in grade 7, they were able to construct a color spectrum already. Uh, however, the focus here is uh, other characteristics than the ones they previously had. So in grade 7, they had frequency in relation to wavelength and uh, the product of frequency and wavelength, which is the speed. So this time, we would want them to take a look at energy and the corresponding frequency. So here is the corresponding table. There. And supposedly, we will be able to come up with the idea that the highest frequency, which is the violet, would also give the highest energy. Okay? There. For the last activity, um, this activity can be a performance task of the students, wherein they are to come up with two things. One is an interview guide, and the other one is an explanation of most of the uh, superstitious beliefs that uh, most people in their locality have. Uh, what are these? They, these are about uh, why the sky is blue, why we have red sunset, and why we do have uh, rainbows. So to check or to give rating, you may use the rubric scoring guide found in the learner's material, which is uh, in, on page 111. There. 
Okay? So, to summarize, these are the different concepts that we are supposed to uh, assimilate as a students uh, in grade 8 as compared to that that they were already they, they have already learned in grade 7 so the closer the light source this is these are in grade 7 the brighter the light emitted the brighter is the light emitted the frequencies of the color lights are inversely proportional to their wavelengths and the product of frequency and wavelength uh, of the color light is a constant in grade 8, uh, we can see here that white light is made up of the different color lights. Each of these lights bend differently when they strike objects like prism. The bending depends on the refractive indices of the color lights. Violet has the greatest refractive index, and so it's expected to bend the most. And the energy of the color lights increases as one goes towards the right side of the spectrum. We are to expect the red light as having the least and the blue light as having the most. And that light is composed of color lights of different frequencies and wavelengths. Okay? To continue, we have frequencies of color lights uh, are inversely proportional to the wavelength, which were already discussed in grade 7 also. There. So again, the sample questions in the teacher's guide can be used as your post-test. Uh, 1 and 2, you can identify these items as uh, to give you information if the students are able to answer key question number one. Three, four, five, six, seven, and ten for key question number two. And in the key question number three, you can make use of um, item numbers eight and nine. Okay? So again, this will be for uh, the module, the last module of quarter one, light. Thank you very much. Colors of light. Okay, maraming salamat ulit, uh, Dr. Morales. That was also tough, no? Uh, mabuti na lang recorded itong webinar. I think uh, I feel that I'll have to go back to the recording to understand all that. Uh, I think some of you also feel the same. But again, maraming salamat ulit for uh, this uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. Um, we are moving uh, next to our question and answer session. Uh, I have uh, copied here three questions from uh, our participants. Well, actually, isang participant lang. Andi, dalawa na. Oh, ayan si Sir Brian. Mayroon na rin nilagay. We have one here uh, on Module 3, and we'd like to address this to Serio. Serio, can you see the, the question on the presenter chat? This is from Ruby Janet uh, Ortiz. Uh, good day, ma'am. I would just like to clarify something. In this slide, heat is defined as the transfer of energy, but as you discussed, heat is energy in transit. Is the energy transferred not the process of... It is the energy transferred, not the process of transfer, right? Thanks much. Yan, sige nga. Cheryl, would you like us to to go back to the mm -hmm. slide, or can you answer, comment on, on this? Um, uh, yes, uh, yes, comment. Yeah. Um, Ortiz. Okay, um, yes, hello, wait. Okay. Yes, go ahead, we can hear you. Okay, Sarah. Um, thank you, Ma'am Ruby. Yes, yes, thank you, Sel. Thank you, Ma'am Sel, and thank you, Ma'am Ruby. Um, uh, when we talk about heat, heat is actually an, a form of energy that is in transit. So it is the energy that is being transferred from one body to another of different temperature. It's not a process, but it's, the, it's a form of energy that is being transferred between bodies of different temperature. Okay. So thank you for that clarification, Serio. Uh, we have... Uh, also, two more questions on Module 5, again, from uh, Ms. Ruby uh, Ortiz. In Activity 5, we address this to Dr. Morales. Uh, in Activity 5, I would like to clarify the relationship of heat, capacity, energy, and time. Why would the sample exposed to heat at a longer period of time have higher energy? as discussed. 
Alright, so let me let us hear from uh, Dr. Morales. I think this is for me, ma'am, on uh, module 3. Ah, so module 3 pa rin, ano? Okay, hit pa rin pala. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, oh. Um, oh, wait, I okay. am confused with... Uh, wait, um, I would like to... Uh, okay, okay. So regarding, this is regarding activity 5, no? On heat capacity. So, um, uh, heat capacity, okay. as I have mentioned kanina, uh, refers to the amount of heat needed by the body or by a substance to raise its temperature. No? Let's say by one degree Celsius. So, um, if you if a substance requires more time for its temperature to change by let's say one degree Celsius, that means mas marami siyang na absorb na heat, kasi medyo mas matagal siyang na exposed. So mas marami siyang na absorb na energy rather. So when I say heat, I'm referring to the thermal energy. So mas marami siyang na absorb na energy. So, ibig sabihin, yung heat capacity na mas mataas. Ibig sabihin, it requires greater amount of energy for its temperature to rise by 1 degree Celsius or by 1 Celsius degree. Okay, so, so that's uh, for activity 5. Yes. Or maybe you can continue the sharing in the summer teachers. Yeah. Pwede rin, no? I-continue pa rin din ninyo yung sharing in kasama teachers. If you have more resources, uh, you can exchange uh, uh, to participants. You can also share them in kasama teachers. So for more of these questions, again, uh, Ma'am Ruby, you might want later on to uh, Add more details to the question based on the comment made by Cyril earlier, so the discussion can help clarify uh, these ideas for our teachers, even those who are not here in the webinar. All right, so uh, another question, I think uh, this one is really now on Module 5 for uh, Dr. Morales from Ruby Ortiz. Uh, I am quite confused with the activity on sound using chimes. How will the students relate the speed of travel in different media, solid, liquid, or gas, with the distance in chimes? Are these analogies correct? Particles equals chimes, and space between chimes equals the state of media, and sound equals vibration between chimes. So let's hear uh, Dr. Morales' comment on, on this. Uh, yes, Ma'am Celia. Um, thank you, Ma'am Ruby. Um, if you are familiar with the learner's material, um, there is an activity before the chimes. That's activity number three, entitled Sound Race, where the sound travel fastest. Now, in this activity, they will be able to identify uh, on what particular medium will sound sound um, travel fastest. So if they were able to identify that it's solid, now, in, in number four, which is entitled Chimes, 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 uh, in-specify na natin na solid. So, sa solid, ang, ang focus natin, ma'am, ay solid, pero may iba-ibang klaseng solid. May mga closely spaced ang particles, may mga medyo hiwa-hiwalay ng konti, at may mga hindi masyado. So, as solid, kapag magkakalapit yung chimes natin, they're closely spaced as compared to the others. So, yun po, ma. Hindi po siya yung kapag uh, farther apart ay liquid at more farther apart ay gas. So, we are talking about uh, one kind of media or medium. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the question really is on the use of the analogy, no? Uh, on the chimes, the spaces yes, between them, and uh, the vibrations that uh, take place between the, the chimes. All right, so more on that. Uh, if you have other ideas and more clarifications to, to offer, uh, of course, Kasama Teachers is uh, the, way, the place to go. All right, there's uh, another question here. I, I like this question. This is um, an essential question. 
What is the color of light from Brian Pato? I think this is also for Dr. Morales. What is okay. the color of light? Um, is this a, color of light, a rhetorical question uh, or a... It's difficult to answer this particular question. Because when you say color of light, there are color lights. And the color that we see when these color lights mix is usually white, which is not a color. So it's something like a very trivial question. So it's how we mm, take a look okay, at it in so several views. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it can have many answers, no? Could be the combination which is white yes, or very specific uh, color lights. Okay, no color so let's you. leave yes, it at that for color. now. I hope uh, Sir Brian is happy. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure uh, Sir Brian is happy with your answer. If not, we can, Sir Brian, you can post that. That's a nice discussion topic for everyone to share. Uh, you can post that as a discussion in Kasama Teachers. You just ask what is the color of light and have people um, give their opinion about this or answers. All right, there's a question here. I think this is for us. Can we have a copy of the slides? Yes, uh, we have in the announcement below the presentation slides, uh, the PowerPoint presentations that are used in the webinar are made available in Kasama Teachers. So I will show you again the, the, the later on the link to this particular page. All right, I'll just put that on, on chat later. Okay, and uh, to get an offline copy of the recording, well, we have not yet compiled this uh, pending some uh, copyright and uh, sharing rights uh, on use of the actual uh, presentation. Presentations, but uh, well, siguro nga hindi mo na ngayon, no? We cannot uh, develop, make the off offline copies yet. Mm, but uh, that's something we have been uh, trying to work out uh, since last year, no? When we started the grade seven webinars, uh, we are that's uh, rest assured that's something we really want to do, so that uh, we can spread this. Uh, webinars to others who have no access to the internet or limited access to the, the internet. Thank you for expressing that need, sir. Okay, so there it is. Now, um, I'd like to request you folks to share with us your feedback about uh, the webinar. So let me just, uh, in the interest of time, I think we can close the question and answer session at this point. And uh, let me give some a few announcements and uh, request you to please fill out the feedback form for this webinar. Okay, so let, let me load that uh, slide right now for you. And this is also where you can get the link to the Kasama Teachers discussion where you can download copies of the presentations as well as uh, continue the discussion to sharings and the uh, exchanges of uh, comments, uh, ideas about the science topics or concepts that were presented. All right, there you are. So may we request everybody, please click on this link to the survey form and uh, the link to the webinar resources and discussions page in Kasama Teachers is also written on this slide. So you can uh, copy that link or you can click on that and uh, add that to your favorites later on. Uh, meanwhile, may we request everybody to please uh, give us your feedback on today's uh, webinar. This is really important to us. Okay, and once you're done with the feedback, uh, please let us know on chat and tell us, please indicate that you have already done it. Thank you, Paul.
Okay, so at this point, uh, let us take this time to thank our two presenters today, Ms. Cheryl Maramag of UP Med and Dr. Maripaz Morales of Philippine Normal University. Let's uh, tignan na natin yung pinractice natin kanina, kung kaya na natin gawin. Okay, everyone, yay, applause. Okay, thanks again for joining uh, today's webinar. Uh, please remember to visit Kasama Teachers again for a continuation. And uh, once more, we would like to invite you to the National Conference in October. This is a three-day webinar and you'll pay only 6000 for the whole uh, conference, but less if you pay by August 15. Download the registration forms, the memos that you need, or request or letters of in invites to Ms. Med. All right, and uh, some uh, new additions to our K-12 resources in Kasama Teachers are flashed on your screens. The links are in blue. So if you click on them now, you get right there. We have uh, for sign And uh, we would like to thank all of you who have joined us this afternoon, uh, especially you mga first-timers, no? at saka yung mga returnees. Talagang uh, napakaganda ng ating... Uh, uh, webinar this afternoon. And of course, this is recorded, so you can get them in Kasama Teachers. Alright, so if you click on this link on the Grade 8 Science Webinar Resources and Discussions that you see on the slide now, you will actually be brought to the page in Kasama Teachers where we will post the link to the recording as well as the three presentations that you saw earlier. Doon po ninyo siya madadownload dyan sa page na yan. And uh, our big thanks also goes to Intel Education, especially Intel uh, Manufacturing Incorporated in the Philippines for giving us this great opportunity to make use of their webinar platform in Adobe Connect for free. Uh, napakamahal po nitong ganitong technology but they're providing it to us for free so that we are able to reach out to teachers in the field. Again, maraming salamat Intel Education.